galaxies are really quite cool. Mysterious, spiraling, impossibly huge structures deep in the universe. Located millions of light years away, we are looking back in time when we capture or see their light. The majority of galaxies, however, are out of reach of us mere mortals without plebeian telescopes. Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes can capture these in great, seemingly infinite detail. However, on Earth, even with a simple digital SOR lens, we can capture the big guns like Andromeda, Bowden Cigar and Messier 33. But what happens when those smaller, fuzzier galaxies take our interest? Let's find out. So yes, this might be a small plebeian telescope, but it's my plebeian telescope. And when it's my plebeian telescope, I can point it out whatever I like without permission from a government agency or a university. So let's do exactly that. Let's point this telescope set up at a seemingly uninteresting small target that's next to one of the most famous targets in the night sky. So this is no 14 inch Dobsonian, but it is a really good little telescope on an equatorial mount. This is what makes it really good for deep sky imaging. We're going to be spending a few nights capturing Messier 110. If you're new here and you like all things space, hit the subscribe button and let me know what you would like to photograph with this setup. Now let's stop talking and get to taking photos of this galaxy. So let's just quickly go over the setup. I'm going to be using a Skywatcher 200p Newtonium. I'm using a 290mm for off-axis guiding and also Antlia LRGB Hydron Alpha and Oxygen filters. This is modified with a Barda Still Track focuser and is running at f4.75 thanks to the Coma Corrector reducer. So, just really quickly, the idea of deep sky imaging is you take lots of photos that are long exposures, put them all together to reduce the noise, and the fainter the target is, the more photos you need to reveal the detail. The darker your skies, the easier it is to reveal faint targets. So that's the very basics of deep sky imaging. The target I'm going for isn't very dim, so this should be quite easy, but I do have dark skies which will make this a lot easier, as you're going to see. The thing you have to be careful with deep sky imaging is the endless amounts of cables. I have cables for multiple setups though, that's why mine looks kind of crazy. Anyway, I've got my computer down here, which is just a laptop. So this is the laptop that I keep outside that's connected to my telescope setup here, but I'll cut to a screen capture so we can see the screen a little bit better and go through what we're going to do tonight to image this galaxy. So we're capturing our data in Nina, which is a free deep sky program and one of the best on the market. And we've got all our targets lined up. And tonight we're capturing Wolf Rayet 134 with some Hydrogen Alpha due to strong Aurora Borealis tonight. So I think this will help push through that Aurora. Then later on we're moving to capturing some final Hydrogen Alpha on Messier 110. I've captured the luminance data and the RGB, so I thought I would try and capture some background HA to see if I can pick any signal up. If we go over to the imaging tab, we can see the data we're collecting. The first exposure hasn't come through yet, as we've just started our evening. So if I scroll along, we can see I've been capturing lots of RGB data in previous nights and in a few seconds we will see our first Hydrogen Alpha sub come through of Wolf Rayet 134. This is a really cool target and I cannot wait to see the end results. So we're going to be photographing Wolf Rayet 134 until it reaches a specific altitude and this altitude we're going to is 47 degrees. The reason why I'm going to 47 degrees is because I've plotted a really handy map that shows the obstructions in my garden. And if we go to around 47 degrees, we can see that the trees in my garden are in the way. So I can set it to go until 47 degrees altitude and then go to my next target. And my next target will be 
M110 in hydrogen alpha. And as we can see on this graph here, once again, we can see that M110 in Cassiopeia skims my roof line and just about navigates. However, we're going to be going to this target as it's approaching the zenith. So we're going to get some really good data on here. Ideally, you want to shoot as close to the zenith as you can, but it was not always possible. So we're going to be going until nautical dawn because we reach nautical dawn before we reach 20 degrees, which will be at 10 past or 11 plus eight in the morning. So we're going to be shooting until almost 6 a.m. at nautical dawn. And we're going to see what we get in the morning. So Nina is a fantastic piece of software. It's automated and will do all this for me. We'll go through each instruction set, focus, meridian flip, everything you need it to do. And in the morning, it will even warm up the camera and park the telescope for me. We're going to let this run by itself and we'll catch you in the morning to see what we've captured. So while I was expecting to have Aurora last night, I was not expecting it to be as strong as it was. I've been photographing the Aurora for the last about two years since I've moved where I live, which is much darker. So Aurora is much more impressive than under light polluted skies. However, I was not expecting it to be as strong as it was and take up the entire sky. So capturing the hydrogen alpha data last night wasn't super great. I was trying to capture the background hydrogen alpha that appears around M31 and the surrounding areas. While M110 isn't the most visually exciting galaxy, it represents billions of stars. So come galaxy season at the beginning of the year, try and push yourself and photograph something slightly different that you wouldn't photograph otherwise. There is so many galaxies out there that people don't photograph because it's easy to gravitate to the same targets each year to try and get a better photo. While M31, M51 and M101 are great targets to get into, they're big, bright and accessible. If you have the setup, try and photograph something different and you'll be amazed because it's something fresh you don't see every day. We get used to seeing endless photos of M31, but sometimes it's fun to see something a little bit closer and something slightly different you wouldn't see otherwise. So this fuzzy galaxy that's 2.7 million light years away might not be the most visually interesting, it's still amazing to look at it up close. 
So yes, come galaxy season, have a browse of the NGC catalogue and maybe something even more obscure and see what you can find that will work on your setup. I really hope you've enjoyed this deep sky imaging video. As we approach winter, there's some amazing targets to be seen and photographed in the night sky. As we approach winter and Orion gets higher in the sky, there's going to be some truly beautiful and amazing targets to photograph. Anyway, as always, my name's Ben, you've been watching Bebo Mastro, and remember to keep looking up.